great. If that's, the music's going off, that must mean it's time for me to start. You guys ready? All right, how you doing? All right, having a great dream for us so far? All right, excellent. All right, this session is called Who Moved My Cheese? A Components Journey from Aura to LWC. How many of you are developers? All right, excellent. Then you know what you just told me by raising your hand? You're lazy. You hate change. Yep, I want to do it the way that I've been doing it for years. Right, and then along comes something like LWC, and you got to relearn everything. All right, but I'm going to make it easy on you. Uh, my name is uh, Greg Ruiz, and I am the product owner. I'm the uh, uh, director of product management for Lightning Components. Um, now, you'll notice I didn't say Lightning Web Components, because I own not only Lightning Web component Components, I also own the old Aura Components, and I even own the old UI Components. Ah, don't use those. You know that, right? Don't use those, because I just deprecated them. Okay, so <laughs> this is going to be your path forward, is LWC. All right, before I go any further, though, of course, forward-looking statement time, because I am a product manager. And so I'm always making forward-looking statements. So if I do, please bear in mind what I say may or may not come to pass, all depending on what my engineers decide to do, because, you know, they don't listen to me. No, they do sometimes. But all right, off we go. Thank you so much for joining my session. Um, how many of you, by the way, how many of you, are, you raised your hand on, on developer, but how many of you actively build in Aura? All right, excellent. How many of you have already started playing with LWC? Ah, good, I'd like to see that. All right, excellent. Well, I thank you very much. I want to start us off, though, by taking us back in time, taking us back to four years ago. Do you remember what happened four years ago? What was it? Lightning. Yeah, we answered this question, what would it look like if we built Salesforce today? We answered that four years ago. And we went from old classic, great old classic that, hey, it's still up and running 20 years later. It's fantastic. But we realized we needed to evolve too because the web had begun to evolve as well. Evolving from a server-side technology where everything was done on the server to client-side technologies. And that was the big revolution, not just an evolution, but a revolution for Salesforce, is building using a client-side framework. That was awesome. But there was a slight issue. Anybody remember 2014? Yeah, a long time ago. 2014, 2013, 14, that was when we started on Lightning. So over that four years ago, almost five, uh, almost six years ago now. And back then, the web looked very different than it does today. You see, back then, web standards were really not much, not much there. The browser could not do all that much five years or six years ago. You see, back then, we had to rely on other things to help us do our job. And that were frameworks. And there was a ton of them. You know, frame, there, there used to be a site. Do you remember that? Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen it. There used to be a site called uh, How Many Days Since the Latest JavaScript Framework? And it was just a big fat zero. <laughs> because there was always a new framework coming out. And as developers, that kind of sucks, right? Because you've picked one, and then another shiny object goes by, and then you feel like, oh, really? So this is a, a thing that we have really struggled with as developers, as all of these frameworks, because all of these frameworks mean that, well, you got to pick one. And when you do it, <laughs> you're locked in, because you can't take your React component and drop it into your Angular app. It's just not going to work. It's not going to happen, right? So that's an issue. And of course, even worse, now you spent all this time learning framework X. And then Salesforce says, no, you got to do it a different way. You got to use a new one. Oh, really? I, I, I feel so comfortable where I'm at in my aura world. And that's, of course, even made worse is that now we're all down in that little silo, right? How many of you have ever had to hire a Salesforce developer? They're not easy to find, right? because it is a very, very specialized skill set, right? So that's, that's, of course, problematic. And then finally, 
How many of you remember your first reaction when you saw lightning? What was your first impression? <laughs> I knew it was going to come. You know how I knew? <laughs> exactly. And that's what we all found out, right? We, we went to lightning. It's like, oh, this is going to be great, this bright and shiny new thing. And then your users started complaining. You started, hey, it's so slow. Does anybody know why it's so slow? Do you know why? I've already told you. Because the web was a different place back then. So what would it look like if we did it again? What would it look like if we built Salesforce again? Well, that's actually what we did. With LWC, we literally did. You see, we went back and we looked at it. And here's what happened. Our leadership came and said, hey, people are saying that lightning is slow. So our teams had to get together and figure out a way to make it faster. And you know the problem with making, how many of you have ever done like a, a mechanical work or, or like you know, anything like that? You know, you can only tighten a bolt so far. If you keep going, some bad things are gonna happen. Right? You're going to break it, strip it, do something like that. And we did. We tried. We literally, I tell you, we tried. We tried to make it faster. But we finally reached that point where the bolt was as tight as we could go. And so the leadership said, well, <laughs> I don't care what you got to do. It's got to get faster. People are killing us out there by saying lightning is slow. So, so all right. So we sent off a couple of our architects to reimagine, to rethink what we had done. Because at this point now, the web has changed. You see, because now the browser is the orange box. It's gotten big. The browser can do a ton of stuff. So we only need to use frameworks for just a small little bit. Things like specialized services or data services or, or the UI components, right? And that's where LWC comes in. LWC is a lightweight framework. Does anybody know how lightweight it is? It's 7K. It's only 7K. The entire framework that Lightning now runs on with LWC is only 7K. And that's amazing. You see, because what that means for us is, first of all, gone are the days that you say, well, Salesforce is proprietary. Nope, not anymore. Because with LWC, we're talking pure HTML. We're talking pure JavaScript, right? The web standards. And that's awesome for us because it means that we're using the same thing that everybody else out there is using. So whether it's Google or Facebook or anybody out there that are building their own frameworks, they're all basing them around this same idea of components. And that means I can take my skills and move. Now, I know you're, none of you are going to move, right? You're going to stay where you're working right now, right? Okay, because it's a great job. But you do now have transferable skills. You see, because again, it's just JavaScript, which means if you got to hire somebody, gone are the days where your post says Salesforce developer. Now it just needs to say JavaScript developer. And that pool of talent is much, much larger. And finally, it's faster. I can prove it to you. How many of you have reloaded a page in Lightning lately? <laughs> Every single one, right? What's the first thing that you see besides the little animation, right? What's the first thing you see anytime a, 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 a page loads? First thing that you see after the animation is the global nav, the header. Search bar up there, it's the first thing you see. It usually comes in, depending on your page and, and how many fields and things you have, that thing usually comes in a couple seconds before the rest of the page. It's almost instantaneous. Do you know why? That's the proof of concept. That's what our team built to tell our, our uh, leadership that, hey, I think we can get faster. They said, how? I said, well, we're going to have to build a new framework the Lightning Web Component Framework. And the global nav up there, that was the first component that was built in LWC. 
as a proof of concept. We put it in and everyone was floored by the performance, right? So that is incredibly huge. But before I go any further, I keep saying Lightning Web Components, but I wanna, I wanna back up for a moment and say, what is a web component? If I, does, it, does anybody know what's a web component? What's the definition of a web component? Well, let me, let me, let me, go, let me go a different direction. Let me take you to um, the real world. What is a component? A component, I'm highlighting some components there in red, is BMW. BMW does not have an airbag for the three series and another airbag for the five series and another airbag for the eight series or whatever. They use the same airbag, it's a component, right? And that is really what we're talking about. When we say web component, what we're talking about is something reusable that I can pick up and take and plug in somewhere else. That is what we're talking about. And we've seen this happening in the web already. Anybody remember HTML5? <laughs> remember all the hullabaloo back then? Even my mom, she goes, I finally know what you do. She's from the South. I said, really? She said, you do that HTML5 stuff. I said, yes, I do. How do you know that? She goes, because I got it on my phone. I said, you have HTML5 on your phone. Well, that's what the guy at the store told me. Right, so, all right, HTML5 was actually our first glimpse at web components, right? Because it was the first time that somebody added a new tag, like the video tag, right? And then, of course, we, as developers, being the developers that we are, we want to build our own stuff, too. And that really is what web components is all about. Now, the web component specification is not a single specification. So when we say web components, what we're really doing is lumping a bunch of stuff together. We're lumping the custom element specification together with the shadow DOM specification, together with the HTML template specification, together with the ES, ES module specification. You do not have to use all four of those to be a web component. Use one of them and you qualify as a web component, okay? So what are these things? Let's break these things down. First, templates. What is a template? Well, a template is nothing more than a reusable piece of markup. Now, if you've been around the web as long as I have, which is very long, you might remember things like Handlebars JS and things like that that were templating libraries. Well, now a template is just part of the HTML specification. And what we put in there becomes just a reusable thing that the browser understands. Says, oh, I know what to do when I see this particular template. Which are usually derived from custom elements. So we can wrap these things up and define our own custom elements. I can say, I want the Greg tag. I think that would be a great addition, right? No, it wouldn't probably. But anyway, I can define my own things. And that's really what you are doing every time you create a web component First thing you're asked to do is to give it a name, right? You are making your own tag. And then there's the shadow DOM. Scary sounding thing. What is it? Well, it is the ability for us to encapsulate these components, to lock them away, if you will, from the rest of the page. Now, why would I want to do that? Anybody have a uh, class in their, in their uh, uh, components called button? <laughs> yeah, right? If I've got a button and my, mine makes my buttons red and yours, you've got a button class and yours makes it blue, we put both of them on the same page, what color are the buttons? Purple, Purple. That, wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be cool? That'd be awesome, but it's not the case. It's whoever loads last wins, right? And that's horrible, especially when we're talking about an enterprise uh, platform like Salesforce. We don't know what you guys are gonna be putting together on a page. So we need to make sure that things are protected, right? And then finally, we wanna be able to share these things out, bundle things up. And so imports allow us to do exactly that. I can import an entirely different framework into my Lightning Web Component if I would like and use that, right? So that's the four pieces. We've taken all of those pieces together to build Lightning Web Components. Now, the one is, the one that we don't currently have turned on is which one? Shadow DOM, correct. Shadow DOM is not currently turned on, but we're ready to do it. And in fact, in Lightning Web Components, we even have implemented something we call the synthetic DOM, or synthetic shadow. And that is actually already getting us ready 
or when the shadow DOM eventually will be turned on completely. Okay? All right, so what does it look like to build a component? Well, here's what it looks like. It's just an HTML file and a JavaScript slapped into a folder together. Boom, you have a web component. I just lied to you. Because one of those files is not necessary. Which one? The HTML, right? The HTML is not even necessary. You can build a web component out of JavaScript, purely JavaScript, only JavaScript. It is perfectly okay. Now, why would you do that? Why would I need a web component that's only JavaScript? Well, I think about things like service components. Maybe a component that's just providing other methods for, component, for components that are, it's used within, right? This is a perfectly valid way of developing and a way that, in fact, we suggest you do. But of course, HTML, we're gonna have some HTML, and it's gonna be in our template tag. Our template tag is going to just define, okay, when you see my component, this is what I want you to render out. Okay, now we'll talk more about that in a moment. And then again, that JavaScript. Now the one thing that I do want to call out in that JavaScript is that export default class. Ooh, wait, what is all of that? I haven't seen that in JavaScript before. Well, that's modern JavaScript. You see, in Aura, you've been living in the past. And I've been asked a thousand, hey, why can't I use ES6 in my Lightning components? Well, because we built it a long time ago and ES6 didn't exist back then. So, but now we're standard JavaScript. You know what that means? When the JavaScript language evolves, so do Lightning Web Components. We don't have to wait. So if they decide to give the double arrow function, then hey, we get it right then and there. All right, so that's really cool. All right, and how do we use it? Well, we just call it out. Say, in this case, I wanna do a hello world component. There you go, hello dash world, boom, that's it. And the browser sees that, says, dude, let me go back to your template, see what kind of markup I need to generate here. Oh, let me see, do you have any JavaScript that I need to fire? And the browser does all of that for us, right? And renders that out. And Lightning Web Components are not just for running in Lightning. You can take them literally anywhere the Salesforce ecosystem goes, okay? You can take them onto your new mobile app, the new Salesforce mobile app. Or you could take them into Lightning out and put them into Gmail or something, something like that. I'm, I don't know, sky's the limit because they are just web components. But what about Aura? Our good, good old friend, that thing from four years ago. What about it? It's okay. Lightning web components can be used together with Aura. They can live side by side. I'm gonna show you later. Um, components, same component. One's in Aura, one's in LWC, sitting side by side on the page. They can even talk to one another. Okay? I can take an LWC component and I can put it inside of an Aura component. And you've been doing that for a year. And you didn't even know it. How many of you have ever done lightning colon button? Base component? Guess what? Under the covers, every one of our Aura components is actually LWC. We've actually been building in Lightning Web Components. My team has been using Lightning Web Components to build all of your base components for over a year now, okay? So we can put them into uh, an Aura. We can talk to Aura. The one thing that we cannot do, however, is go the other way. You cannot take an Aura component and put it into a Lightning Web Component. I just lied to you again. You actually can, it just won't compile because in our compiler, we actually check to make sure you can't, okay? But in theory, we could let you do that, all right? But we didn't do that, why? Because who's gonna take a Volkswagen engine and put it in a Ferrari, all right? We don't want you putting slow stuff into fast stuff, right? And that's literally why we did that. Okay, so let's talk. Let's talk about moving from Aura to LWC. What's it all about? All right, first thing you gotta know is you gotta say goodbye to that lovely thing right there. Let's, hey! I love it. Oh, who's in love with the developer console? 
<laughs> no, nobody is, right? Okay, so that's the first thing we gotta know is no more developer console. If you want to develop in Lightning Web Components, you must move to a modern way of developing, something like VS Code. Now that's what we suggest. Why do we choose VS Code as opposed to something like Sublime or Atom or you name another code editor out there? The reason we did that was because VS Code is actually built on something called the Monaco Editor. The Monaco Editor is actually a web-based editor. In fact, did you know that VS Code is nothing more than a web page? It's a web app. If you don't believe me, do Command or Control Plus to make the text bigger, and you will see the entire interface expands. Why? Because it's all a web page. And that is actually where we want to go with Salesforce. Here's one of those forward-looking statements. <laughs> we want to replace the developer console with another web-based way of developing. And so we wanted to do it on the Monaco editor. And what better way to get our feet wet than using VS Code? and adding in our extensions to VS Code, all right? So that's the first thing you're gonna need to know. Second thing you're gonna need to know is we've simplified the file structure. Now, our component file now maps to HTML, and it is pure HTML, and I'll talk more about that in a moment. The JavaScript file, the controller, the helper, the renderer, they've all been merged together into one single file, the JavaScript file. Who looked at the helper the first time and went, what the heck is that, <laughs> right, yeah. Okay, gone is all of that stuff. We are dealing with pure JavaScript now. CSS, of course, we're gonna keep a CSS around. Uh, and then we're gonna take all of our metadata, our design file, and the version for our API and stuff, and we're gonna move that into our metadata file. And of course, we're still gonna give you an SVG so you can look at it in, in App Builder. The one thing that is missing currently in LWC, which makes the developers happy, is the documentation, you don't have to write documentation right now because you can't, <laughs> so there you go. All right, but we're working on that. All right, so component file. The component file in Aura was a mishmash of stuff. You had Aura attributes, you had markup, some, some people were even doing logic in there, you know, concatenating strings together and all sorts of stuff. This is a, no, 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 this is insane. Separation of concern. So in the Lightning Web Component world, the component file is pure HTML. You are not allowed to put anything in the component file except HTML. Done. End of story. You can't even concatenate a string together. You have to do that elsewhere, and I'll talk about that in a moment. The JavaScript file in Aura, did you know it wasn't even JavaScript? I know you knew it because you looked at it. And you said, this is the weirdest JavaScript I've ever seen. Who ever heard of a function name, then a colon, and then function? Do you know why that was? Because that is JSON. That's a JavaScript object notation file that we then had to read, parse, and turn back into JavaScript in order to execute JavaScript. <laughs> no wonder it was slow. In LWC, it's pure JavaScript. It's the latest JavaScript. It's whatever is out there at the moment. You want to use it, feel free. Right. And then finally, the metadata file I just talked about is now going to be the one file that I was missing in my Hello World example from earlier. Remember, I had an HTML file and I had a JavaScript file. I did not have a metadata file, which means I could not use that component inside the Salesforce platform because I'm missing this file. So this is the one that exposes our web components to Salesforce. All right, so you ready to move some cheese? All right, let's go learn all the new stuff. All right, first thing you gotta know, LWC decorators. Coolest thing about LWC, in my humble opinion, are the decorators. Decorators are not proprietary to LWC. They are part of the web component specification. But what is a decorator? I'll talk about that in a moment, but first thing you're gonna to need to do is to import them. So this line of code is gonna be in every single web component that you ever create. You're gonna import the lightning element from the LWC framework, and then you can import whatever other decorator that you would like to use. There's three of them. There's API. What does this do? This takes a property, so a variable, if you will, an expression, and exposes it to the outside world to allow other people to manipulate this. Maybe it's a parent component, Maybe it's something like the page, which we'll see an example up here in a moment. You can also do the same thing with uh, um, uh, methods. And 
if you are using a property, that property becomes reactive. And what does that mean? That means whenever that property changes, the Lightning Web Component immediately redraws to update with that value. You and I as developers don't even have to do anything. We're out of the loop on that because the component is doing it on its own. At track does exactly what it sounds like. It tracks the variable and says, if this variable changes, I need to update that. So it's the reactive side of a private property. So no one can talk to me except my own component. And then finally, at wire. And what does it do? It wires, there's the pun, it wires up data to our components via something like a service method, maybe a get record from the UI record API, or from your own Apex. So let's talk about that. All right, first things first, when we create our first Aura component, what are we gonna do? We are going to, of course, decide where is this thing going. We're gonna put in interfaces, right, that implements equals line. And we did things like say, oh, uh, I'm uh, gonna be available for a record homepage or available for all page types. That today is now done in our metadata file, in the target section. We simply say what target we are interested in. There are more than just those two, obviously. There's all sorts of, all the ones like uh, quick actions are available for the, the, the uh, utility bar or whatever it might be. Those are all targets that you are going to place in your metadata file. Then we had to, of course, expose our component. In the Aura world, we did that through access equals global. In our world, we do that in the metadata file in the is exposed tag. We say yes, true. By default in VS Code, when you create your Lightning Web Component, we make it false. So you need to go in and change that to true to expose that. And then finally, we have things like force has record ID, which I use all the time so that I know which record I'm looking at or where my component is living. And of course, that then in turn went into an Aura attribute with a name of record ID. In our Lightning Web Component world, the way to do that is literally at API record ID. You're done. And we now know, the component knows when it loads on the page, which page it's on, which record it is on, okay? All right, so that was our component interfaces. Let's talk a little bit about the changes to my base components, because there are a few. First thing is, you'll notice, there's a naming difference. In the Aura world, you said lightning colon. In the web component world, you say lightning dash. So everything is with a dash. So that's cool. Even attributes. In the Aura world, we use camel case a lot. We would say icon, uppercase N, name, right? In the Lightning Web Component world, again, everything is lowercase, everything is a dash, okay? And then this is the big one. <laughs> this one trips me up every now and then. I've, I still somehow have that ending slash, the self-closing tag thing in my fingers. Get rid of that in, in your finger habits now because every Lightning Web Component needs a closing tag, okay? So you no longer have self-closing uh, uh, tags like our lightning record form used to be. All right, so how do we talk to Apex? Well, that depends, because there's now two ways to talk to Apex. One is through that decorator, that at wire thing that I talked about before. Oops, sorry, thank you. There. One is that at wire that I talked about before, and the other is to imper imperatively call the Apex method. For the Apex method that you are doing through uh, um, Aura, you said Aura enabled. You made it public, you made it static, and you could talk to it, right? The exact same thing applies in the LWC world, but only for one way of calling it. If you want to use at wire, you must also annotate cacheable equals true. Why? Because I don't want to go back to the server if I've already got data and it's still fresh. Remember speed, what it's all about, right? So that is required if you want to use it in, uh, uh, through at wire. If you want to do it imperatively, oh, first, sorry, jumping ahead. So let's talk about what it looks like in code. So the first thing is, in the Aura world, we did controller equals, named our controller. Then over in our JavaScript, we went in and we said which method we were going to use. Remember C dot, C was always controller, unless you were in your controller. 
and then the C was controller. Okay, that's perfectly clear. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, now we don't have to worry about stuff like that. We just say, hey, I want to import something. Give it an alias. That's the import get similar properties from Salesforce Apex. Oh, there's my, my controller related property. There's my method at the end. Bingo, I can now call this anytime I want. So how do I do that? Well, in the old oral world, you had to do a handler, like something like an init, right? To say, hey, go ahead and go fetch all this data. Well, in the, L uh, the LWC world, we just do it with an at wire. We say at wire and then pass the name of the alias, if you will, that's pointing to the method that we would like to call. Boom, it's done. We can also pass properties along. So for example, I'm passing record ID and price here up to that Apex class. And when it all comes back, oh, by the way, when does the at wire fire? What tells it to fire? Nothing tells it to fire. It knows, the framework knows, the moment it sees an at wire, it fires. It goes off. Before a pixel has ever been drawn on your screen, the at wire is already long gone, okay? So when it comes back, what are we gonna do? Well, when it comes back in Aura world, we had to say, okay, which attribute am I gonna put all this stuff into, right? To, to be able to reuse. In the LWC world, you simply say whatever follows the at wire parentheses. So it's at wire parentheses. Whatever follows that parentheses, that's where the data is going. You can put it into an object, which I'll show you in a moment, or you can put it into a function if you want to manipulate it. So I'm passing my values straight down into my function I've called wired property. Okay. All right, so that's talking to Apex one way. You can talk to Apex imperatively, however. So let's say, for example, you had a button, and when you click the button, that's when you want the thing to fire. Well, this way, you can do it just like this. On a handle click, you just simply say, after you've imported it, which method you want to fire, and then you do a promise. And that's the then, and then you catch any error that might come back. Okay? That's doing it on demand, if you will. All right, so let's talk about using Lightning Data Service, because Lightning Data Service actually cut down tremendously on the number of Apex classes and methods I had to write. In the old oral world, we did that through force record data, gave it an or, or a ID so that we could talk to it later. In the LWC world, we don't actually use Lightning Data Service at, per se. We actually use the plumbing underneath Lightning Data Service, in this particular case, the UI Record API. So I'm simply saying, hey, go get a record. All right, question is, which record? All right, well, I'm going to tell you which record I want you to get by designating that API record ID, for example. And then, what fields am I interested in? This we do exactly the same as we did up in the oral world. We just give it a, a string array of the fields that we're interested in. And when it comes back, we put it somewhere. And now you see the at wire putting this results into an object I've called property. Okay, so that's poured in there. If you need to get to data in there, then you just say things like property.data.fields.whatever, right? Whatever it is that you are after. All right? So, talk about expressions. Expressions are one of the biggest changes in the difference and the move from Aura to Lightning Web Components. Because in the Aura world, everything was in quotes. In the Lightning Web Component world, almost nothing is in quotes. The only thing that's ever in quotes is an actual string. Whose bright idea was it to do quotes, curly bracket, bang, something, right? It's not a string, right? So, no more quotes. Also, no more concatenation. No more doing silly stuff like broker4 plus v.property.name, no. In your HTML, you might have something like lightning card title equals in curly brackets, no bang, no V, no C, no nothing. Just in curly brackets, you give the name of the variable or the expression. And that is what you track back over in your JavaScript. Now, in this particular case, that JavaScript is going in saying this dot card title is being set here with a concatenation in something called the rendered callback. This is very important for you to understand. There's several different connect, uh, callbacks. There's one called connected callback, and then there's a rendered callback. Now, 
What goes in the connected callback is things that are plugged into data. When we are, when we are connected to the page, if you will, that's stuff in there. If you're trying to manipulate DOM, you must do it in the rendered callback. So I'm trying to change the name of something. I want to do that in the rendered callback. Okay? That says, I'm going to do this as I'm rendering out the component. Okay? And talking about conditionals, let's talk about good old Aura if. How many of you have ever used Aura if? Do you know what happens when we encounter an Aura if? We go back to the server to evaluate it. Are you serious? Did I mention Aura was slow? Yeah, that's why. So Aura ifs are evaluated on the server, believe it or not, see talk, I know. We do ifs via the template tag. Template tag is an HTML tag. Template if true. If true is part of the template tag. That's not part of LWC. You can Google it and find answers because this is nothing to do with LWC. This is just the way the browser works these days, right? And so we just say, if true, do I have something in this object? Does this evaluate to something? In my case, it happens to be props. If it does, then we are immediately going to flip it, show it. You don't, and I, as the developers, don't have to do anything to re-render the component because the moment a template if situation changes, the browser knows it and swaps it for us, okay? If we want to do an or iteration, a loop, we do that using the template tag too, using a for each. And we're just going to say for each item that you find in this object that I'm telling you about, I want you to do something. And I'm just going to call it item so that that way I can display it in my component. Okay? All right. Finally, how do we handle change? I just told you that most things change automatically. You and I don't have to do anything. Well, that was through, the way we used to do that was through an aura handler like change to say, okay, when this changes, I want you to go fire an action. In our world, I can make this at wire fire anytime I want it because I've actually annotated my variable, their price, see I'm saying track price, I'm passing it with a dollar sign. And that dollar sign says, show me the money. Make this thing change. Whenever this thing changes, I want you to go back to the server and refire that at wire. So to recap, at wires fire immediately. But then any time that their parameters that are annotated with a dollar sign changes, they fire again. Okay. All right. I've only got two minutes left, so let me show you very, very quickly a couple of things. All right, so, hello. I'm in the show. Apparently, I have to end show to get out of here. That's okay. I'm suddenly not showing you up there. Sorry, my apologies. I'm not mirroring. one of my new, the newfangled computers without the, uh, the function key, so I gotta figure out how to mirror my computer now. Let's see what this thing is. Wow, that's interesting. I don't have show mirroring either, so I'm not gonna be able to show you that. That's fine. I will go back to the slide presentation, and we will go back over here. I should have checked that before, because here's what I wanted to show you. You'll, you'll be able to look at this in the slide. All right, I got two components, or three components actually, um, that I wanted to show you about the Aura version and the LWC version. So what I did was I went in uh, onto uh, to, uh, my GitHub, at github.com slash Dharavi slash Dreamforce 2019. I put that repo up for you. You'll be able to go and access that. So I've got a, a, a couple of components. This one is a simpler properties component. Basically, it's running inside of our, a fictitious real estate app called DreamHouse. And I showed you that you can see those are the two components. Those are the, one's the Aura, one's the LWC. You would never know which one is which. And that's the point. Unless, of course, you're watching the page load. <laughs> then one might appear faster than the other one. All right. Um, I've also done a, a different one uh, showing uh, something called Lightning Record Form, and that is uh, being used to display some broker information, again, as, a, as an example. And then finally, my favorite one, my mic drop, and I'm really irritated that I couldn't get the mirroring to, uh, to work properly because 
my mic drop component is called the form builder. Have you ever tried to build the, uh, the details uh, panel? Anybody ever had to do that? How long did that take you? How many hours, days, weeks, months? I've got a component that you can drag onto the page and your admin can build a form without ever talking to you. They can tell which objects, which fields, how many columns, the whole nine yards. Check it out, I love it. <laughs> it is literally my cool mic drop. And with that, one last word. We just open sourced our base components, if you didn't hear that. Okay, so we announced that this morning so that you can actually go and view the source code for most of our components. Now I said most, not all of them are there. Some we can't open source because they rely on some internal stuff that we aren't able to share with you. Um, but we are looking to find a way to expose those for you down the road as well. You can add, you can change, you can remove functionality because it's now your component. And of course, you can deploy that anywhere that you're going on Salesforce and down the road, even other places. So that is where we will be going on our journey towards Dreamforce next year. All right. And with that, I'd like to say thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'm happy to answer any questions, but I want to do it uh, to let the uh, room clear out. I'm going to grab my laptop and walk out in the hall. So if you do have questions, please find me out there. Thanks for coming. I hope you enjoyed it.